Yes, great question. Uh, I guess there's like two aspects. One is like there are some things that we that only happen in microgravity, like for example, the adaptation of biological systems of like the human body, of you know animal um, systems, of plants, um, cell cultures, tissues, all of that, and how those biological systems adapt to weightlessness. You can only study in in space, right? Uh, but then there's also, also phenomena where the fact that you you can switch off the effects of gravity up here. You can pretend that gravity does not exist. It takes away all the um, effects that are driven by gravity, and then you can observe other phenomena. For example, and we might see that quite soon, buoyancy up here does not play a role, which is interesting, for example, for the solidification of uh, um, metals. Yeah, that is very interesting, and I have confessed I have never checked, and so I would suggest let's find out together. Um, I have prepared this uh, bag of water. Uh, there's just water in there and maybe some air bubbles. So I hope you can more or less see it. And I have sacrificed a little bit of my supply of olive oil uh, for the purpose of science today. So just hang on for a second as I uh, grab that. So I have a syringe with olive oil in my hand, and we're going to squirt it into that bag of water and see what happens. Come a bit closer. Here we go. And now I would say, let's mix a little bit. Let's shake it. And here's what happens to it. I've got a, all a bunch of uh, olive oil bubbles mixed in there with uh, air bubbles and in the water. And indeed, they do not seem to separate, which makes sense because, as we said earlier, there is no buoyancy up here. You know, for sure, to do a spacewalk, you have to wear a very bulky spacesuit, a pressure suit, uh, that also has very bulky gloves. So you don't have much dexterity in your fingers, in your hand, and the gloves are just big. And so all the tools that are made to be used on a spacewalk are actually kind of like, they look like bulky and big. But the reason for that is that you need to be able to handle them with those, you know, with your gloved hands. Uh, and so they look a little bit different in, in that sense. And in terms of a hammer, I, I, I've never been really trained to use a hammer on a spacewalk, but I did see one that the Russians have that was developed for that purpose. Um, and what is different about it is that they made sure to have like a um, moving mass inside the hammer so that it dampens the um, the back slash that you're going to have if you try to hammer something you don't want it to like slam back at you um, and so they have this dampening moving mass inside the hammer to prevent that
Yeah, that's an interesting question. I actually saw a video of a colleague of mine years ago doing some really cool yo-yo tricks. Um, but he had like a, a yo-yo with a free spinning axle that could like uh, stabilize itself gyroscopically. We'll talk about that here in a second. So I have a plain yo-yo here and um, I can show you. I cannot do great tricks because I think a lot of those tricks rely on gravity, like, you know, walking the dog um, with no gravity pulling on the uh, yo-yo. It's very hard to do, but uh, we can give it a try. Let's see what happens. See, it kind of comes back at you without you even having to pull. <laughs> it kind of wants to come back at you without having to pull like you would have to do on, uh, on Earth. But here I have something else to show you, which is uh, also really neat. I have a little toy gyroscope. Now, now it's, the gyroscope is not turning now, right? So I can turn it around and, 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 and it's just going to, you know, let, let me move it in all directions like any other object. However, if we make it spin, see if I can make it spin. Now, it's not going to let me move it. I mean, I can push it, but it's going to keep the same orientation in space. See, the axis doesn't change. I can push it around, but it maintains its axis. And this is gyroscopical step. Oh, sorry, <laughs> need the mic. What I was saying is that now that it that I got it to turn to move, the uh, the gyroscope. I think you saw it. I could push it and move it, you know, left and right, up and down, but it would maintain its axis. It would not let me, like, spin it and turn it around its axis. And that's gyroscopic stabilization. And we use that a lot in spaceflight. And even up here on Space Station, we have four gigantic gyroscopes that help keep Space Station, keep space station in attitude. Um, right now my stomach feels empty because it's lunchtime, so I'm a little bit hungry. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I, I think it feels more or less like on, on Earth. So eating and digesting, I have the feeling that they work really well also in, in, uh, in weightlessness, in microgravity. Uh, your, you know, your digestive system has a way of uh, handling that and pushing things in, uh, you know, in the right uh, direction, even in uh, weightlessness. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in, in terms of like feeling queasy and a little bit, uh, um, having a little bit of nausea, that happens to some astronauts or to some people in general when, when you get to space. And it feels a little bit, I think, like uh, being seasick or uh, sick in a plane or, or in a car. But again, our, our body, and then, you know, if you're sick in those first days, obviously you don't want to eat, right? You might have a little bit of nausea. Um, but, you know, after a few days, everybody feels fine. You know, the body adapts, and it's a testament to the adaptability of the human body that we can adapt to that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's try that. That's fun. Here, I have a little uh, washcloth, a little towel. I already squirted some water in it, but uh, we can add a little bit more. While I do that, I'm going to show you again the, uh, the oil and the water after a while, see? They still didn't separate. <laughs> Right, I'm going to come a little bit closer. All right, here we go.
That was pretty neat, I thought. I hope you liked it. That is a very important question. And uh, um, so, so you can make coffee in space. Uh, usually we have coffee in, in pouches like this. So they come with uh, coffee powder in there. And um, uh, you just add water, and it's like instant coffee. Uh, a few years ago, we even had an espresso machine on board, and we could make a real espresso. And then we even had um, zero G coffee cups, so you could, you know, take your coffee and squirt it into this very special cup, and you could drink it out of this cup. Now, usually, what happens in space if you want to put liquid in a cup and you do that? Um, actually, nothing happens. The liquid doesn't come out because there's no, you know, it, we are weightless. Uh, but that cup had a very special angle that made the fluid want to come out per capillary action. And so you could actually enjoy the aroma, the, the smell of the coffee, and drink it out of this very special cup. Yeah, fantastic. By the way, I'm here with Paxi. So um, uh, Paxi also wants to say uh, hello. Uh, fantastic talking to you guys uh, in uh, in Italy, in uh, Milano, I understand, uh, in uh, uh, Portugal and in Luxembourg. Uh, nice to hear that we even had a participant from Indonesia. So it was very much an international call today. Uh, please keep up your uh, your great work, your interest in, in science and in space, and maybe I will greet some of you as a colleague in a not-so-distant future. Bye.